rights of the children. In Islam, start at the time when the parents, they make an intention, they make a niyyah of having children. As, as soon as a couple, husband and wife, decides to have children and they get close to each other, they get close to each other with the intention that they may have, they may get, they may conceive a child. At the same time, teachings of Islam starts. Hukukul ibad start. At the same time, the rights of the children has started, the child. Even though the child is not even born. I mean, forget about birth. The child is not conceived yet. Even before conceiving the child, when husband and wife get together, the right of that child starts. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you intend to, to khalwa, which means to go to your wife, and you intend to have children, then you must make the following dua. Bismillahi, Allahumma jannibin ash-shaytan, wa jannibin ash-shaytana ma razaqtana. Oh Allah, yani before you actually get together, you make a dua, you make an intention, you make a supplication to Allah. And the supplication is Allah. Oh Allah, we ask your protection. We seek your refuge, your protection. From who? From shaitan. And we ask your protection from shaitan for that ma razaqtana, for that that you will give us through our relationship. Which means the children. We ask even for the children that they be protected from shaitan. And he, can you imagine the beauty of Islam? Before the child is born, that be conceived, even before that, the rights, hukuk of the child has started already. That you must make dua. Oh Allah, protect me, my wife, and at the same time, that what will you give me from our relationship, our offspring. Sahih? Then, the second thing we discussed, the Prophet ﷺ said, when children are born, we discussed this in detail, I'm just giving you quick, quick notes. We discussed that one of the rights of the child is when the child is born, you give him a beautiful name. You give him a name. And the Prophet Sunnah, his own practice was when he gave children the names, he gave them names that are associated with the beloved ones of Almighty Allah. Names of the Anbiya, name of the Salihin, name of the Ahlullah, name of the Prophets, and names that have a meaning. Not names that have no meaning whatsoever. Like these fine parents today sometimes, they give names to their children that have no meaning whatsoever. Islam is a faith, Islam is a religion which gives us the guidance that even in our religion, a days, days have all names, nights have all names, days, months have all names. In our Islam, even the Islamic months, for example, Muharram has a meaning. Safar has a meaning, Rabi al Awwal has a meaning, Rajab has a meaning, Shaban has a meaning, Ramazan, for example, has a meaning. Ramzan, Ramadan, that month Ramazan is the month which comes, Ramzan word comes from Rams, which means burning sensation. Ramadan is Ramadan. Why? Because it is the month in which people fast. When they fast in their body, a chemical process takes place which makes them feel burning sensation. They go through the burning sensation when you fast. And when the person feels that sensation burning, while he feels that, at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all his past sins. This is the beauty of names. So even the months, even the nights, for example, we have Laylatul Qadr, the most important night in the year. Laylatul Qadr has a meaning. It's not just a night. Layl is night. Qadr is powerful. Qadr is that night which is superior. Qadr is that night. Why is Laylatul Qadr superior? Why is it, does it mean the superior night? The powerful night? Of course, no doubt. Because this is compared with all other nights throughout the year, the most superior night. This is the most powerful night. But also, there is another reason, that, that is another meaning. That is, this Laylatul Qadr is the night in which a person, when he, with intention, with, with sincere intention, ikhlas, ikhlas, sincere intention, he wakes up and he prays to Almighty Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his own status, the status of that person who prays to Allah. Allah elevates his muqam. Allah makes him superior among his servants. Because now he is not merely a person. Now he becomes abid. Now he has spent one night awake, but the reward he gets is like he has spent thousand nights awake. Thousand months awake. Thousand months. This is the name, Laylatul Qadr. The same way, go back to the names. 
When you have children, you must give them a name that have a meaning, and a good meaning. Then, the Prophet ﷺ, and we discussed this last week in detail, Aqal salatu wasalam, the Prophet ﷺ used to say the azan in the right hand, ear. In the, in the left ear, he used to say the iqama to the child as soon as he is born. Then another thing the Prophet ﷺ used to do is, when the child is born, if it is a male, if it is a boy, the parents must do sadaqah. They must sacrifice two sheep, ram. If it is a girl, they must sacrifice one lamb, one, one sheep. This is sadaqah. This is aqiqa. This is known as aqiqa. This is sadaqah. It is charity. Now, this is that type of charity that the, the reason why we give that sadaqah, charity. You no know, one may question, why is it? Yes, we do it because we become thankful to Almighty Allah. Become you because you as a parent, you become thankful. Oh Allah, thank you. You thank Allah that He has given you children. I mean, having children, I can tell you as a parent myself, is one of the greatest joys in life. One of the greatest blessings. And those that are parents, imagine that day when you had your first child. The sisters upstairs who are listening, imagine that day when you had your first child. That joy is priceless. That joy of having your own child. And that smile on your face. And that expression on your face when you found out that you were became a father. Or you became a mother. It's, it's priceless. One of the most beautiful things and one of the greatest ni'mah of Allah is to have children, offspring. But with children, as I said, at the same time comes responsibility. Comes the rights of the children. And this is what we are discussing. So that for it, when the child is born, you must be thankful since it is one of the greatest blessings of Allah. But at the same time, this sadaqah, this aqiqah, it is sadaqah. One of the benefits of sadaqah, why we have to give sadaqah? When there is a benefit, very, very hidden and very important, significant benefit. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is a hadith in which he said, لا يرد القضاء إلا بالدعاء والصدقة. Which means, that destiny, that Allah subhanahu wa that, that is your destiny, right? That destiny that for you already has been written and already is in the knowledge of Almighty Allah. You cannot change that except there are two things that are even able to change your destiny. Destiny means your future. It means whether you will become ill or not. Whether you will become healthy. It means how long will you live? Will you earn enough? Will you earn? How much will you earn? Risk? How much risk will you get? How many ni'mas of Almighty Allah will you get and how many will be taken away from you? Destiny is all including. So the Prophet said destiny cannot be changed. Destiny cannot be except by two things. That is illa bidua vasadaqa. Two things can change your destiny. If you, have, if you have a destiny which is negative, if you have a destiny in which there are trials, you have a future full of problems, full of trials, full of hardship. The Prophet ﷺ said, two things can change your destiny. Two things can change that trial, difficulty, hardship and change it into easiness. What is that? First of all, dua. First of all, sincere dua. Which means supplication from the bottom of your heart. With sincerity. That dua in which you are communicating with your Lord. And you are also shedding tears. In which you are detached from the dunya. And you are only attached to Almighty Allah. And you are sincerely with humility, with humbleness. Asking Him, Oh Allah, I am nothing. I have no power. Everything I have is because of you. And Allah, if there is anyone who can change my destiny, nobody can change it except you, O oh Allah. Your treasures are unlimited. The moment you make such a dua with sincerity, the Prophet said, that destiny which is written for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change it. But at the same time, there is another thing. If you did not do the dua, another thing which is also one of the reasons, ways to change your destiny, it is sadaqah, which means charity. The Prophet ﷺ said, if a person gives charity, sadaqah, what is sadaqah? Sadaqah is to the poor people. Sadaqah is money. It could be one euro, five euro, hundred euro, thousand. Every person according to his own, uh, you can say, pocket. 
according to his own earning. But sadaqah, give sadaqah. You can give sadaqah in the form of money. You can give sadaqah in the form of killing uh, an animal, uh, slaughtering an animal and distributing the meat. Sadaqah could be of anything. You could give sadaqah in the form of putting your hand on the head of, the, of an orphan and arranging the, the, the education of an orphan, for example. Arranging the, the whole life study of, the or, of, of an orphan. You could give, do sadaqah by, for example, giving money to a charity that will dig a well in those countries where people have to walk miles and miles and kilometers just to get one bucket of clean water. To do any type of sadaqah. And when you give sadaqah, by the way, to tell you, you do not need to tell a person. When you give a sadaqah, and even zakat, even zakat, you know, we all have to pay 2.5% zakat of our annual savings. Even zakat, when you are giving zakat to a person, a poor person, a person in need, or you are giving charity, a sadaqah, you cannot, you, you should not, you should not tell the person, you should not tell the person, this is zakat. Yes. You are not obliged to do so. In fact, you shouldn't do so at all. Why? Because Allah knows what is your intention. Allah knows what is your niyyah. Why do you want to embarrass someone? Why do you want to embarrass someone by telling him, I am giving you zakat? Every person has dignity. Every person has self-respect. If a person, even though he may be in need, but if you tell him this is zakat, the person may feel him, that he is lower than you because he is at the receiving end, you are at the giving end. Just that, you know, Islam teaches respect. It teaches, it teaches to, to respect and acknowledge and in the society, all are equal. So if Allah has given me and I have to pay zakat, I don't have to feel I am special. I am not special. It is Allah's blessing that he has given me from his treasures more than he has given someone else. Now at the same time, it means I have more responsibility than someone else. So this is when you give sadaqah or charity, as I said, then do not, you do not tell the person, you're, you can just give it to him. That's it. Give it to him. But And also, let me tell you, that you cannot give uh, sadaqah or you cannot give the zakat money to those that are sadat. Those that are sadat means those that are from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the 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 shurafa, the sharif in Arabic we say a sharif family. Or we can't give it to them. They for them it is haram to take sadaqah. We can help them if there is a need. Someone who is a sayyid someone from the family of the beloved Prophet ﷺ who is in need, we can give him hadiyah, we can give them hadiyah, but we can't give them zakat money or sadaqa money. Sahih? So this is just the third or fourth thing that is required when you have children, the aqiqah. Now next thing, after having done the aqiqah, and the aqiqah should be, it is the appropriate, most best way to do on the seventh day, but if someone did not was not able to do so and he did it on the 14th day or the second month or the third month of the child is perfectly fine but remember the sadaqah is something that will change hardship into easiness so if there is in the child's life illness for example illness allah has written in the taqdeer that the child will become ill if you pay if you give the akika and you sacrifice that is sadaqah and that sadaqah can change that trial into easiness so this is why we give. So this is why one must not delay unnecessarily the aqiqah, because it is sadaqah. It is something that will change the destiny for the better of the child. So you should not, if there is such a situation, you should not delay it unnecessarily.